Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. This video is gonna be a little bit different than what I typically do. We're gonna go over some of the cabling tools that I use when I'm on site. I'll also show you some of the cable vendors I use. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, I have an Amazon storefront and I'll put it in the description below. The first tool we're gonna to talk about is the fish stick. So I have these glow in the dark fish sticks and they are five foot lengths. It's a little difficult to show you guys how these work, but you would want to use these if you're going through drop ceiling or if you're trying to fish some drywall to get the cablings down the wall. You could combine these fish sticks to make it a longer length just by screwing them in. And also to find these easier, these ones are glow in the dark. So if you're pushing it through drop ceiling, you'll be able to see it if there's not a lot of light up there. For all these tools, I'll leave Amazon links in the description below as best I can. Some things Amazon won't have. Now I'm gonna bring you guys over to the table and do a top-down view of all the other tools. The one tool that I think is a must-have is a good pair of cable scissors. These things will cut through Cat 5E, Cat 6, Cat 6A, and fiber optic cables. Um, these scissors are by Platinum Tools, but you could also get some from Klein Tools, and you could just see how easy it is to cut through this Cat 6. Um, it works a lot better than snips, and you could also score the sheathing on the cable just by twisting it around and then breaking the sheathing and pulling it off. And now we have all our conductors exposed. The next tool I usually use on almost every job site is my Easy RJ45 Pro HD. Um, this is for crimping your RJ45 ends, and you could also do pass-through with this. And I'll show you guys the pass-through. Right here, this is a pass-through um, RJ45 Cat 6 end, and I'll grab the cable that we just cut with our scissors, and then we'll end up passing these conductors through the RJ45 end. The standard I use in Canada is T568A, but if you're anywhere else in the world, you're probably going to use T568B. So for me, the color code starts at white green and then solid green, and you want to make sure that your conductors are straight. And you could either use your fingers for this or you could use the uh, end of scissors or whichever. And then the next color is going to be white orange. And then it's going to be solid blue and then white blue. And then we're going to go with our solid orange and then white brown and then brown. Since all these aren't straight, I'm just going to cut the conductors. And then I'm going to bring them a little bit closer. And then I'm going to grab my RJ45 end. I'm going to make sure that the tab is facing the bottom. And then we're going to just push them through. And you can see that the conductors are going through the pass-through. And we want to make sure that the jacket is inside the RJ45. So it reduces crosstalk. And then we'll grab our easy RJ45 crimper and then put the end through. And then we'll crimp it. And now we have a perfectly working RJ45 end. The next tool is a brand new tool that I picked up by Vertical Cable. It's called the Eye Punch tool. And what this does is when you put the conductors into a keystone jack, it will actually crimp it for you. So I'll show you guys how I do that. First, we're gonna get our cable and then we're gonna take our RJ45 Cat 6 jack. And again, I'm gonna put it on T568A. Um, you guys will probably use B, so it'll be a little different. The first color for me will be my solid green and then white green. Next will be solid blue and then white blue. On the other side, we're gonna start with our brown, our solid brown and then our white brown. And then it will be solid orange and then white orange. And you wanna make sure that the jacket is as close to the jack as possible to eliminate crosstalk as well as the twist in the cable. So now that all our conductors are pushed down, we could grab our eye punch tool and we just put the keystone jack inside and then we crimp it down. Take it out and now all our conductors are punched down perfectly. A different way to terminate keystone jacks is with a 110 punch tool. This is a little harder than the vertical cable eye punch tool. What you would have to do when the conductors are down, you have to put this cutting and into the terminal and then press down 
and that will cut the cable off. This takes a little more effort. I really like the vertical cable eye punch tool. It's gonna save me a lot of time. The next tool up is a tone generator by Ideal Networks. And what this does, if you're trying to locate cables inside your office building or inside your house, you could use the tone generator to plug into one end and then search it with the probe. Another must have tool if you're gonna be doing troubleshooting is a basic wire map tool. So what this will do, it will make sure that your terminations are all done correctly. And we can see on the one side, it says one, two, three, six, four, five, seven, eight. And it says the same on this end. This is to test the cable. So if I grab this patch cable, it should test out properly. We'll plug it into the one end and then we'll plug it into the remote end. And now we'll turn it on and you guys will see some green blinking lights. And if it goes all the way up and down green, that means the cable is good. If it shows a open, you will not see the green light go on or it will just show a reverse, which will be red. These aren't certified testers. You can buy certified testers. They're a lot more expensive, but they will give you an actual printout of the test results. And the last tool that I'll show you guys that I sometimes use is called a cable comb. And this just makes your cable bundles look neater. And I'll put something, a picture on screen to show you what it would look like. But you just take the center part out and you would fill all your cables in here. Once the cables are filled, you would put it up and then you would bundle it down with Velcro to make it look neat and straight. You always wanna make sure that you have some a roll of Velcro on you as that's what you're supposed to use. You shouldn't be using tie wraps anywhere. And you could get Velcro in multiple different colors. I have black, blue, and red, um, but you could get white or whatever color you would like. Now that you've seen some of the tools I use, let's look at some of the cable vendors that I use. So my primary one that I go to right now is Vertical Cable Cat 6. We also do Cat 6A jobs if the spec requires it. For a box of vertical cable, it's $139.95 MSRP US. This is for CMR, so this is non-plenum cable. If you need a plenum cable, it's gonna be more expensive. The next brand we use is Belden. Belden is fairly expensive for a box of Cat 6 FT6 cable, which is plenum. You're looking at about $600 Canadian. We only usually use this when it's a certified job, but it's great cable and very easy to use. The last thing we'll talk about is patch cables. I use these patch cables. They're by Monoprice. They're slim patch cables at six inches. They're Cat 6A, and for a 10 pack of these cables, they're $15.99 MSRP US. These six inch cables are great for cable management within your rack. You could also get them in longer lengths. They go from six inches all the way up to 50 feet. I do have a cable certifier and I'll show you how to use that in another video when I'm doing an on-site job and I'll show you my rack terminations and how I dress the cables into the rack. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.